thinking, Davey, that this is almost like opening Christmas presents. You never know what you're going to get. Hello again, everybody. We're ready to open up another championship wrestling. Lance Russell with Dave Brown right along the ringside, and boy, we have got another one of those days ahead of us, I'm sure. Got quite a package to begin with here. The region bull, Manny Fernandez, in here in the opening match as a single today. We'll have Jeff Jarrett teamed with the Nasty Boys. They'll be on one side of the ring in a six-man tag team match. Jimmy Jack Funk will be here a little bit later on. We'll also be looking at Hector Guerrero. The Midnight Rockers will be in, too. All of that coming up later today. Oh, yeah. We got a couple of other things, too. We got, we're always getting comments and conversation about wrestling schools in the area. We'll be talking about one today. In addition to that, coming up uh, during the next week, uh, there will be a special battle royal and i know that you remember this some of the folks may not remember we had one other that i recall where the wrestlers weigh in and they pay an admission fee on a dollar, dollar per, per pound, pound. I remember that. Yeah. well we got a lot of them here for our television broadcast so they will be weighed during the during some time we'll be picking up different weights okay. and all of that but what happens is they pay a dollar per pound then the promotion matches the total number of dollars that they put in so that one prize coming up, uh, the Ooh. guess is that it's around 8,000, 8,300, some yeah. 7950, somewhere in there is what the guess is. It'll be interesting okay. to see exactly what it's going to be. We're going to be having that and lots, lots more. Can't do it unless we get into it. We'll take time out. Be back in a moment. <laughs> signifies we are not far away from the opener and boy it ought to be a dandy because the raging bull is going to be in here and that means trouble anyway you look oh, you're right here he comes bomb from the bomb bomb Okay, Mr. Class in there against Manny Fernandez, and that is not good good news for Mr. Class because I will tell you one thing, he is in there with one of the roughest son of a guns you will ever see anywhere, anytime. Boy, he is indeed. Fernandez out of Texas, weighs in about uh, 250 pounds, and I tell you, he knows how to put it to use, and it uses the right fist, for instance, uh, as he did just there. Oh, 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 that upper arm absolutely peeled his head right off. I mean to tell you, that son of a gun. Nail him with a chop there, Dave. Manny, formerly one half of the world tag team champions, and he is not in a happy mood. Fernandez is just attacking this guy viciously. He's going after him, whips him across the ring from the slingshot again there's that big upper arm and just cuts the legs right out from under him puts him down as referee jerry calhoun watching to see about the use of the fist and on the ropes but fernandez with a headbutt pops him up there and it has been all manny fernandez in this open match on championship wrestling boy it still is a minute 20 seconds gone and uh He's just doing it any way he wants to. Ooh, man, oh, man. Huh. Manny Fernandez. No stopping the steamroller, and he really cut him to pieces. What was the time, Dave? One minute, 29 seconds. Listen, let's go to the back and see if we have our first weighing back there. We're supposed to... Oh, okay. Well, we'll wait just a second, then we are... We as yet have not uh, picked up uh, the picture of anybody weighing in, but we're going to be doing that throughout Championship Wrestling Program today. Manny Fernandez, a quick win in there today. You know something, Lance? Something that irates me more than anything in the world is Jerry Lawler's running around here thinking he is the CWA champion. First of all, you put a punk to do a man's job. And Jeff Jarrett. Hey, He's nothing but a boy. Manny, I don't want to interrupt you and get you irritated, but I want to tell you we've got our first live weigh-in for the dollar-per-pound battle royal coming up. And, Stan, let's see who that You're is. talking I about can't. a couple pennies per pound. That's let's just see. a little penny. Jeff Jarrett oh. is weighing. Speaking of Jeff, here he is weighing in. He was supposed to be weighing in, and there he is. Uh, he'll be... Uh, oh, he weighs two and a half pounds. Uh, 
Okay, you're bigger than he is. So uh, he's going to be paying a dollar a pound as just weighed in back there now. That's great, you know. When you got to have to pay two and a half pounds compared to 200 something pounds, I guarantee you, there ain't going to be much left of you in this battle roll. Because I told you, when you don't send a man to do a boy's job, you get in a lot of trouble. And Jeff Jarrett is a little boy, and he thinks he's coming up in the professional world. Well, I promise you, when I get through with the Jeff Jarrett's, the Larry, Jerry Lawler's, the Bill Dundee's, you're going to realize that the rest of the bull has just begun. Because, baby, when it's over, said and done, I will be the CWA heavyweight champion. I will take over this area, and I will run everybody else out. Because you know why? Because nobody but nobody can deal with a bull. And that is risky business. Well, there it is for Manny Fernandez. A little comment that pretty well covers it all up. Let's take time out. We'll be back in just a moment. Hey, Wednesday night, take advantage of all of it. Son of a gun. I'm talking about championship wrestling right there at the Coliseum in Evansville coming up Wednesday night with special Christmas prices. $5 and $3, and not for just a skimpy card, friend. I mean for a real knockdown, drag out, action packed one. We're featuring a big dollar per pound battle royal. That means that each guy pays a buck per pound to get into it. The promotion matches it. It comes out in Evansville at 8130 bucks to the guy that wins the battle royal. Now, in addition to that, Jeff Jarrett will be going against Manny Fernandez. Many, many more. Somebody that's got some comments, and you'll be interested maybe in them. Let's listen to Mark Gouleen. Let me tell you something, Bill Dundee. You egomaniac. Or you think that you're a superstar, and you claim to be a legend in your own time, but you have made a fatal mistake when you crossed the house of Gouleen. Kijo Khan will meet you in the ring, anytime, any place, anywhere, and you will pay with much pain and suffering. No one will recognize you when the mighty Khan is finished with you. Oh, yeah, superstar, Bill Dundee, T. Joe Khan, another of the great bouts that are going to be on there. Remember, $5 and $3, Wednesday night, Evansville Coliseum. What a night of championship wrestling action it'll be. Hope you're going to be right there with us. Yeah, that music is telling It's time for a young fella that uh, had himself quite a go. Jeff Jarrett coming out here now, and I can't do anything but have great admiration. Jeff, how you doing? Delighted to see you out here. You're looking good and looking happy. I appreciate Lance being out here today, and you know I've done a lot of thinking over the past week, and uh, what a night of wrestling that was. Whoa. I tell you what, I had two matches in one night. I got beat in both matches, but I still, but I still feel good about it, Lance. Uh, a lot of people are probably asking why, but I'll tell you why, Lance. I feel like in one night I wrestled the two best wrestlers in the world, one in Jerry Lawler. I believe the match uh, went about 20 minutes or so, and the other was against the world champion, the AWA world champion, Kurt Henning. And I'll tell you what, that was a long, hard-fought battle. And, and uh, I, I still feel good about both matches, cause even though I did get beat, but I guarantee you, I'll remember that hey, night the rest I of my gotta life. i got to tell you, a lot of people will, too. You attracted a lot of attention because n n both of the matches in there, you were in it all the way until the one, two, three. How do you compare the two? I mean, that's interesting because you had the opportunity to go against Lawler and immediately go against Kurt Henning. How do you compare these two? Well, a, lot of, a, a, a few other people have asked me that same question. Uh, you know, they were two different, completely different type matches. Uh, the one against Jerry Lawler, uh, we had been the partners the very week before, and uh, I know one thing. A lot of people have asked me, who's the tougher of the two? All I can say is Jerry Lawler beat me fair and square. And the so-called AWA World Heavyweight Champion had to have some outside help. So I believe that answers your question right there. <laughs> well, that tells us what. I'll tell you one thing, uh, uh, Jeff. I was I admired the fact in the Lawler match in there. It showed me, and I think we said it on the commentary whenever we were doing a, a particular match, that in looking back on it, you came of age. Boy, uh, Lawler popped you one and you <laughs> came right back. That's right. Uh, just like the, ki <laughs> the king even always says that you got to fight fire with fire. And I felt uh, that's what I had to do in that match. But now this week, I couldn't be happy with my opponent. It's Manny Fernandez. Now, boy, you're out here ranting and raving and uh, talking about riding the bull. Well, there's no other person I'd like to face this week, and, and that, that's you, Manny Fernandez. 
You know, uh, in that this match coming up, I'm going to be looking forward to doing one thing, and that's pinning your shoulders to the mat. So not only to prove to myself and to you, Boyd, but to these people that I did deserve that world title shot, and I'm looking forward to it, Lance. Okay, good luck to you, Jeff. I'll tell you one thing, friend. You haven't had any easy road. We're going to see Jeff in action, Dave, as we've got a six-man coming up, right? Yes, we do. Jeff's going to be a team of Brian Nobbs and Jerry Sag. There they come. The Nasty Boys. Well, that's, that's some kind of team right there. On the other side of the ring, here they come. That's Nate the Rat, you see right there, Nathaniel Whitlock. He's bringing his executioner's team up here, and they're going to be partnered with Keith Robertson. Keith out of Memphis, Tennessee. Executioner's out of Parks Unknown. Nasty Wars. Brian Nobbs getting the crowd chanting. Nasty, nasty. They're out of Allentown, Pennsylvania. Jeff Jarrett from Hendersonville, Tennessee. Got a ring full of them here for this one fall, 10-minute time limit match. Yeah, we do. Kind of an interesting pairing uh, with the Nasties and Jeff Jarrett over there. Uh, two big guys. Boys and Jeff starting out, he is the smallest of the three guys in there, but he's a lot bigger, I'll tell you, after those matches with Lawler and Henning that he had in everybody's eyes that watches wrestling. Executioner, number one, is starting out, and his partner and Keith Robertson over on the side with Nate the Rad walking around with his walking stick. And that's not to help him stroll down the street either, I got a feeling, Dave. I think you're right. I think you uh, better keep an eye on that walking stick as the match progresses here. Brian Nobbs in after the tag. Executioner number one finds himself flying in the rope. Whoa, Jerry Sag stepped in and a little double up by the Nasty Boys. I'm not sure they tagged, but it's Jerry Sag staying in there. Sags and Knob, the nasty boys. Uh, these are a couple of guys that they're not always that particular about making tags or anything. <laughs> they just kind of go in there to get the job done one way or the other. Big backdrop from Jeff on the executioner number one. He better seriously consider making his way to the corner, my friend. He definitely needs a tag. Yeah, we've had Jeff, Brian Nobbs, Jerry Sag, and now Jeff back in there again. And on the other side of the ring, it's been executioner number one all the way. And that's almost two minutes gone in the match. That is, at least from our observation over here, is not good managing of your team or your strategy, either one. Hooks that arm on a rolling arm lock, takes him over and pops him down on the mat. Bag made by Jeff. Brian Nobbs coming back in. Ooh. Double upper arm. Brian Nobbs has the executioner in the air. He slams him. Look at this. Bag drops down and covers. Might be it. No, a count of two is all he got. I thought he had him right there. Boy, he sure looked like he had him in there. I, I felt certain that I think he must be a little addled because he definitely, there he is back in the corner and makes the tag. I was going to say he definitely should have gone for that tag quicker than he did, but he got the tag and the other executioner, number two, is in there now. Keith Robertson has not been in. Good move, Jeff. Robertson, everybody on this side of the ring is in there. Here come the nasty boys. That's going to even it up. Didn't take them long to get the clues. Look at that nod. Slams down. The executioner, number one, Robertson, whipped into the rope. Double close line off. Nice drop kick. And Jeff makes the cover. Two, three. Great move by Jeff Jarrett. Three minutes, 31 seconds, and Robertson had the shoulders pinned by Jeff Jarrett. Very 
good win for Jeff and the Nasty Boys, and they brought a victory out of some turmoil that took place in there. I really thought we were going to have it stop before we ever got to the conclusion of that doggone thing, David. We've got other big action coming up. Some interesting news and videotapes. Take time out. Be back to it. <laughs> Remember I told you, special Christmas prices, just $5 and $3 for an admission to a whale of a night of action. Nightmare number one will be going against Billy Travis. Bruise Brothers will be facing the rock and roll RPMs. Boy, that'll be a scrap and a half with the newcomers going against the old vets, the RPMs. Nasty Boys going against King Carl Fergie and Hector Guerrero. Big Scott Hall will be in to face the Black Panther. Bill's superstar Dundee, T. Joe Kahn. No love lost in that son of a gun. And it's going to be a grudge match with Jeff Jarrett having to go against the rough and tough street fighter Manny Fernandez. Finally, a dollar per pound battle royal. Yeah, each of the guys have paid a buck per pound. The promotion matched it. $8,130 goes to the winner. Whole lot of scrapping going on for that Christmas bonus. See you Wednesday night. These guys just had a successful match in there in the six man talking about Brian Nobbs, Jerry Sags, and I gotta tell you, they've been coming on strong. The nasty boys. Man, I'll tell you, you guys uh you guys had a chance to go against the midnight rockers in a challenge and uh I have said it was a super match. I think you surprised them. They didn't think you're gonna be that tough. Yeah, I think we did too. Friendship goes a long way. We know for three years, we fought together in bars, we partied together, right? But now, after this happened, me and Sag look back. They've been taking advantage of us for a long time. They've been riding with us. They sleep while we drive. We paid for the drinks, all kinds of stuff. They've been taking advantage of us long before that match, and it finally hit us, you know, after that match. Let me interrupt you just a second, Brian. I've been told, uh, Jerry, that uh, we got a weigh-in back here. We're weighing in, as you guys know, on the dollar per pound. And speaking of the rockers, there's Shawn Michaels weighing in right now as they're checking the scale. The we got two times. Everybody's seen that match. You can see them weighing in back there. They're not going to look that happy when they get in that battle royal they're putting the money up for. They push, they push, and they push till there's no end. Finally, it came to a conclusion. That match you just seen. Well, right. I, uh... One good thing, Lance, we punch. get them twice. We get them twice. Not only do we get them in a match, and we're going to beat them in that match, but we get them in a the battle royal. More punishment, baby. So you guys... You don't double-cross the nasty boys. You don't double-cross the nasty boys. I hadn't planned to. When three years of friendship, some goof comes up with money all down the tubes. What do you think of that, Lance? Hey, well, I will reserve my comment. I think it, uh... You pretty well know that I'm not happy about it coming out here right now. You're a little premature. You're not supposed to be out here again, Mark Goulin. Uh, I couldn't stand it any longer. I cannot stand to hear these men even speak of these the world champion tag team. Don't you men even talk about them. Thank you. Well, let you shut up, you wimp. Huh? A lot of friendship uh, just because you're not going to manage you go through us now, okay? Money. We come to you uh, money. money. Three years of friendship down the tubes for that. Uh, What's this money going to do for you two years from now when you got no friends, huh? What is friendship going to do? Is that going to pay the bills? You know, friendship is really nice, but there's a time it's got to step aside. And I'll tell you what, Woody, have you done the same thing to use in our place? No, I don't think we would have there, Janetti. Uh, I saw, I saw you close one and you were down. You were down. Hey, come on, guys. We don't need you know, a fight out It's so funny. We taught these two punks everything. They came off a football field not knowing the first thing about professional wrestling. The Midnight Rockers took them in, and now look at them. They're all painted up and big, mean, and nasty. You guys are the biggest joke in professional wrestling. You are the John. Hey, come on, come on, Jerry. Let me tell you something. Come on, come on, guys. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, Marty. Hey, hey. You guys, save it for the ring, for crying out loud. Come on, Brian. Yeah, we'll see you in the ring, huh? Okay. It was you. It'll be in the ring. Yeah, you will. In the ring. We'll see you in the ring. Oh, my.
Yeah, oh my. With those fists in the ring. With that respect, you take somebody and you teach them the way of wrestling, you teach them how to learn, and you do everything for them, and that's the respect they well, show. I gather from the closeness here that the deal has been completed with Mark Goulin, huh? Lance, the, the money was yeah. supposed to come up. Did they come up with the money? Oh, huh? The money has exchanged hands. The contracts are signed. I now officially represent the finest tag team in professional wrestling today. I want to hear it from you guys. That's right, Lance. Don't really you worry. It is all Lance. I'll tell you what. Just to show that the Midnight Rockers are top-notch kind of guys, we're going to share the wealth with you, pal. Because I'll tell you what, Lance. I like you a whole lot. I like... I don't like it that much, pal. Give me that back. Oh. I'll tell you what, Lance. Here's a $10 bill for you, and you buy another one of them snappy suits yours. I'll tell you that much right now. You know something, Lance? Now, stop talking. I know you're always trying to jump in here. It's so funny to me. The nasty boys, they come out here all big and mean. We'll see you in the ring. I'll tell you what. The Midnight Rockers, the former world champions, the Southern Tag Team champions. Let me tell you what. We're just a shivering in our boots about you two big pukes wanting to beat us up. I'll tell you what, we've gone through every tag team in the world today, and we come out smelling like a rose. And you want to know why? It's because we're number one. You ain't got to like us, but there isn't a tag team in the world that can touch the Midnight Rockers as far as professional wrestling is concerned. Well, we heard the story. We've seen the fact that you actually sold out to this guy. You took the money and went with him. You made the bed, now you're going to have well, to lay it. Why don't you paint your face like them painted pansies? Hey, come on out there and see if you get a side show in the circus, huh? Okay. You know, talking about laying in beds, that's another thing. The nasty boys, I think they're all upset. You know what? The question that keeps coming to Marty and I's mind is, how in the world, how in the world do the nasty boys get any chicks? Well, you want to know how? It was from hanging around these two studs right here. Well, them days are over, boys. You're going to have to pick them up on your own now, and that's a lot of lonely nights. Okay, you see it. The Midnight Rockers, Mark Gulen, it is official, David. They have signed with him, and uh, they are now represented by Mark Gulen. And, you know, does it sound familiar? Have we seen guys that have taken Take that quick, money. short path? You remember Paul Diamond, huh? That's Talk Mark to him a little yeah. later. What happened? It all a falling out. Hey, had second thoughts about it and a lot of other things. We could name a bunch of them that are exactly the same way. Okay, let's get back up into the ring, my boy. We've got some more action, and oh, boy, looking down at this one. I do not envy boy, David I Wilson I do not either. either. David oh, Wilson in the ring right now. Got to admire him for climbing in there because yep. he is going against, out of Amarillo, Texas, 263 pounds worth of Jimmy Jack Funk, and here he comes right now. Oh, it's one thing to be mean, but when you're mean and you got a couple of screws loose upstairs, it just makes it that much more vicious. Jimmy Jack dumping that rope over the uh, the post up there, the one with the bell tied to the end, the referee Jerry Calhoun. And he jumped him just as we were ringing the bell. Typical of Jimmy Jack Funk. Didn't even wait for the bell. He just jumped him from behind. David Wilson hit with a clothesline. Yeah, Jimmy Jack Funk. They were wearing those uh, chaps that he wears under the ring. David Wilson. David's out of Arkansas. Jimmy Jack sliding the bottom of the boot off the top of David's head. Mm, look at that. Uh, Picky yeah. Boy, just pounding. Look at him holding him down there. My advice, give it up, David, man. It is not worth it. Because uh, this guy, he is absolutely wild enough. He can hurt you permanently in there in a split second. David weakly put up a leg, but he just, he's no match at all. And it looks like... That big power slam from Jimmy Jack Funk. That'll be all of it, too. Minute 10 seconds of time on it. Jimmy Jack Funk in control before the opening bell started. He seized control and kept it the entire way. Yes, he did. So an impressive win for big Jimmy Jack Funk as he went against That's David I Wilson. Take care of Sissy with the Texas Twister. I got one question. For everybody out here, where are all the heroes? Huh? You expect everybody to look up to sissies like Fat Jerry Lawler? 
Jesse Boyd, Jeff Judd, Jeff Travis, Bill Dundee. No, where I come from, the Funks are heroes. When you hear the name Funk, you listen. I was just talking to my cousin Terry and my cousin Dory, and they told me I'm not getting the respect I deserve. Well, I'll tell you what, every time I get in that ring, from this day forward, I'm going to hurt somebody. I'm going to make them respect Jimmy Jack Funk. You hear me? I hear what I'm you're gonna saying. Hurt him real bad. Jimmy Jack Funk, uh, what do he do to David in there if, he, if he's going to start hurting oh, somebody? Sure. I got to tell you, take time out. Be back in a moment. wrestling schools would have some information on one uh, our buddy Randy Hales uh, went to Bill Dundee's who has one in Gallatin Tennessee let's listen to Randy as they go through the school okay all right we've had a lot of opportunities to talk to superstar Bill Dundee but this one a little bit different we're at his home in Gallatin Tennessee and Bill uh, everybody knows about your wrestling career some of the people may not know that you're involved in running a wrestling school now wrestling's hard enough when you just have to worry about yourself but now you're worried about 10 other guys and trying to train them well, what's the reason well I don't know it's just like you know I've told this story, this part of the story before. When I started, when I was a kid in Australia and I wanted to be a wrestler, there was no such thing as a wrestling school. I used to run around and knock on doors and everybody would tell me I was too small and I'd go to the matches and say, well, I'll just wrestle anybody. You know, and it was just, but that doesn't work that way. So I guess it's just like trying to play for the Chicago Bears. You just can't walk up and say, I want to be Jim McMahon. You go to know what you're doing. So a lot of people used to, over the years have asked me and said, Bill, can you teach me to wrestle? Well, for one reason or another, I didn't have no time because it was, you know, so then I got to thinking about it, and for something that's been so good to me over the last umpteen years, I thought, now what can I give back to the sport that I love, and I, you know, and it's been my life for the last God knows what. So I figured all them kids are asking, so if Bill Dundee can do anything to help them get into the wrestling business and make it easier, I figured, well, I'll just start a wrestling school. So I did that, got involved with the gymnasium side of it, got involved with the, with the wrestling part. I got about 10 kids now, you know, and then they're all athletes in their own right. So on Sundays, like you asked, it's hard. I go up there from about 12 till 5 in the afternoon and teach them to wrestle. I've heard they're doing real good. Oh, they're doing real good. And talking about doing real good, you want to go see them? Let's do it. All right. Let's see them, right? We'll go. Okay. You know, Bill, there's a lot of things that goes with being a professional wrestler, and yeah. this is a very, very important part of it. We're in your gym, as a matter of fact, right here in Gallatin. Yeah, in Gallatin, Tennessee. Now, this is the part that nobody likes to do. I mean, all the football players go to do it. Jim McMahon go to do it. Even the refrigerators go to do it. you got to come to this gym. It doesn't matter what sport you're in. It doesn't, you know, whatever gym, whatever you are, whatever you want to do, professional sport, you got to come work at. Now, this is the hard part. I mean, we have a lot of fun wrestling. We have a lot of fun driving up and down the road, but this is the hard part. And I Everybody, little kids in the backyard, go out to wrestle one another. But professional, hang on here. Timmy, 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 Timmy. He went for a hip toss, and Bill, let's see if we can hear Bill you describe. You one to the guy. Hey, you break your leg if you let you go. Butt up under here. When you bring him out, yeah, see, you did it with your leg. If your leg goes out, you knock that thing out, brother. You go get that butt up under here. So when you... Bill describing how to do a hip toss. That's right. Either you do it with your leg, you can push the fat with your, your leg or anything. That's what Timmy did right there. So, like I said. So that's one thing you do. You yeah. watch them. Super teach them in the first place. Teach them right. Like everyone else, you go land to swim. That's very good. Right right he was on balance, right. balance, and that was it. Yeah. Now, if anybody's interested, just give the superstar a call, and the number is if it's out of town, area code 615-452-9464. And I'll be sitting right here at this gym, and I'll answer you, and I personally teach you. So if you're interested in being a wrestler, just give us a call. And like I said, I'm just trying to give back something to the sport. It's been good to me for the last few years. And like I said, I'm just trying to make it easy. Yeah, it's a good job, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Billy, let me say this. Uh, I've had a lot of people, Dave and I were talking about, we get all the time people asking about, you know, how I can get into wrestling. And what I've told them, I didn't have the number and all. If, it, if they want to take a little longer, they could write to the individual sure. station in their area uh, to Bill Dundee Wrestling School in care of the station and it will be forwarded to you. That's the only way I knew to tell them. Yeah, no, that's about how it is, you know, and it's just like I'd explained it on the tape, so we're not going to go all over that again. 
I'm just trying to give back to something that's been nice to me, you know. And, and people, every day somebody will ask you, the last day, or Jerry Lawler, or somebody in the wrestling business, how do I get in? Well, that's how you get in, brother. I, you know, I'm just, I don't know, it's just a kind of a hobby I like to do. And maybe, friends, you can turn out some guys that know about wrestling and some of these street brawlers that we have oh, yeah, out there. I do, and like I said, it's no piece of cake. I got a friend of mine sitting home right now that goes to that school, Barry Davis. He hurt his leg. He'll be back in a month, so everybody gets hurt now. But they got me booked with an idiot now, not no wrestler. They got me booked with T. Joe Kahn, so everything you learn of it. Oh, my God. Hey, come on. Can't you wait till somebody's through? You come out here, it's the second time you've been How dare you perpetrate a fraud on the American people telling them you're a wrestling instructor? You look more like more something like a some sort of dime store a hillbilly singer than you do a professional wrestling Lance, teacher. Lance, ever since this idiot showed up here, I've been trying to figure out the accent. Because I got an accent. I'm from the other side of the world. But I believe you invented that, Galeen. I believe you invented the name and all the money you're supposed to have. I don't like you, Peter Lawley of the wrestling business. So get off my interview time, punk. I tell you what, you want to learn something about wrestling, you get in the ring with my man, T.J. Khan, who's learned from the best, the house of Guleen. And don't you well, I'm going to show you who the fraud is around here, idiot, because I'm going to get up here and wrestle this clown, wonderful. and maybe you'll leave and take them stupid rockers with you. Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful nothing. Just watch this, big boy. I'll tell you one thing. Oh, yeah. Jump him from behind in there. Bill Dundee going to go in the ring. He, I tell you, when you throw a challenge out to this guy, he's going to take it up. Guleen hits him before he ever gets in the ring. And then T. Joe Kahn catches him while he's still not ready in there. Never gave him a break going in the ring. As T. Joe Kahn nailing Bill Dundee. We had a match scheduled. Coming he up. A, he wanted a wrestling lesson. We'll give him one he'll never forget. He may never recover from this lesson. Yeah, I noticed you had to hit him from behind before he ever got inside the ring as T. Joe Kahn with a chokehold right now. We need some somebody to come out. This wrestling. isn't wrestling. He's going out there. Ping pong. This is wrestling. This is a wrestling. Choking ball. him in there. That's not wrestling. Hey, come on, come on now. You're carrying it beyond. We've got we need a little help in here. Yeah, I need some Hector Guerrero. What? Yeah. Hey, get up there. He's choking him. Wait, 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 wait. Boy, you're great help. T. Joe is choking on him. Yeah, break him up. Get him off his throat, Hector. Well, Hector Guerrero at least served the purpose to get T. Joe Khan back off. And Hector, for that we thank you in there for stepping in and interrupting. When a guy was choking, Dundee is about out of it right now. Oh, yeah. I might have known. Now, T. Joe Khan and Hector Guerrero on Dundee. Here comes Billy Travis, John Paul, Jerry Sag, Eddie Crawford. And they finally get all, oh, you're, you're a lot of help, Hector, fine. You're a lot of help. Yeah. He needed a little help. You know, he needed a little help just about all these people that hang around here. They look kind of what I got here in my hand. Uh, I see, I see. Bill being helped out, helped out of the ring uh, after being, the first thing that happened is Guleen hit him before he ever got into the ring. And then T. Joe Kahn, when Bill turned around, T. Joe Kahn got him from behind and trying to choke him to death in there. Hector Guerrero comes out. Yeah, I'm going to help. I'm going to help. And what's he do? He gets, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of just like all you people out here. Hey, do I look a little bit familiar? Does my leg look a little bit well in that condition? Let me tell you what causes that. You know what causes that? Let me take one here. This is one of these natives hanging around these parts. You know what happens? Their brain gets so swollen because they got so much ignorance in their brain that the brain swells and it prevents from all the blood from going up. And that's when you get this red condition of the neck. That's what happens. You people remember that because here is the best and that is the Mexico. You remember that. Some more advice from the Mexican Connection, Hector Guerrero. Dave, we got a match coming up. There we do. The Mexican Connection's Hector Guerrero jumps in there and grabs Ken Raper just before the bell sounds. Hector. 
out here running his mouth and uh, interfering in the guise of helping to break up uh, an altercation between yeah. Bill Dundee and uh, T. Joe Kahn. Hector now in the match officially against Ken. He picked him straight up in the air and suplexed him. Guerrero dropping down with the upper arm. There's cover. Count is at one, two. Ken Raper able to break out of it at the two count. He's still alive against Hector. Hector out of Mexico City. Ken Raper out of Memphis. Back on the ropes, Ken Raper. Boy, look at that. Hector threw him halfway across the ring. Caught him with that forearm uppercut. Look at here. Has he got him? Well, no, he's got the shoulders down now. Down at two and three. That's it. 104. Hector Guerrero takes the measure of Ken Raper here in a one fall, 10 minute time limit match. So it didn't take Hector long once he jumped in the ring. Okay. That'll happen. Anybody gets in the ring with me. And all you chicken kids, you remember that's what you look like. And this is what you are, a chicken. Oh, yeah, let's take a break. We got more action coming up. We're going to be back to it in just a moment. Oh, in case you just tuned in, my friend, what I'm talking about is $5 and $3. That's right. Wednesday, Coliseum, special prices. And boy, what a special night of action. Dollar per pound battle royal. Jeff will be going against Manny Fernandez. Bill Dundee, special match with T. Joe Kahn. I know the man does not like to get jumped from behind. That's right, Lance. Nobody likes to be that. Well, I'm just going to tell you something, Mark Galeen. There's going to be one guy short in that battle royal, because if you've got that idiot I plane tacking him out long before we get into the battle royal. Now, I know what you're saying. Oh, my T. Joe Kahn's six foot tall and 260 pounds, and he's only five foot seven and 218 pounds. Well, that don't matter, brother, because you like to quote things from books, and have you ever read the first book that somebody ever wrote? There was a guy seven feet tall, a guy five foot seven and little david won that one and little billy plans on winning this one oh i'm not saying he ain't tough i'm not saying he ain't bad the thing that you overlooked is the superstar stuff and he's bad and i'm going to prove it to you and that idiot wednesday night right there at 400 court street which is the coliseum and i'll see you there punk and i'm taking your chinaman out Ooh, i got a feeling that's going to be a scrap and a half but that's just one of them remember Battle Royal dollar per pound is worth 8130 bucks to the guy that wins it, and that is going to bring out the best or the worst in everybody that's in there. They'd love to have that as a special Christmas bonus. All in all, looks like a big, big night coming up. Wednesday night, Evansville Coliseum. Make your plans to be there. Okay, we got a tag match. We can get them out here, and let's get going on this thing. Let's get the tag out here. We're out of time. Uh, you know, we ended up with about three or four minutes, and we're going to get this Midnight Rockers and Billy Travis John Paul match on. Okay, here come the AWA Southern Tag Team Champions. This is their first official appearance of the Midnight Rockers with Mark Gouleen. And Dave, how about the officials? All right, it's going to be the Midnight Rockers, Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty going against the team of Billy Travis and John Paul. This is going to be an expiration of time match, and unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of time left. But uh, we'll get it going and see if we can get one, maybe two falls, certainly one fall in as we uh, get this one underway. Referee Jerry Calhoun, we await the signal. Billy Travis over to try to shake hands with Marty Jannetty. Jannetty just turned and walked away from him. Jannetty and Michaels have uh, had a certainly a change of attitude in the last uh, six, seven days as they have signed on with Mark Gulleen, who's in their corner. Well, I go back, Dave, and, and uh, we look at uh, the situation. You remember both Pat Tanaka and Paul Diamond when they associated with downtown Bruno, what happened to him. Um, John Paul, Marty Gennetti starting out in there, I, I, I would would simply say the fact that they have a new association doesn't diminish the ability of these guys. We have said in every way we can, they're as good as anybody that we've ever seen step in the ring, the Midnight Rockers. But uh, 
there's a lot that can happen when you start looking only at the dollar and you don't see what's behind. I don't know how else to say it. I'm sure there's a better way than that. Janetti with John Paul with a front face lock in there. Travis and Paul, while nowhere near the reputation that the Midnight Rockers have, they're uh, they're a couple of very capable young guys themselves, Davy. Oh, you're right, John Paul. Oh. Get a shot right there from Marty Janetti, though. And he pops him again. John Paul out of Minneapolis. Oh, he's having his hair pulled. Look at Gulen from outside. Mark Gulen slapped. Yeah, he's got no business doing that, Jerry. No. The referee knows something happened, but he didn't see exactly what. So. There's a tag made by John Paul. Billy Travis comes in to do battle with Shawn Michaels. Billy reverses him into the rope, leaps over. Ooh, Michaels nice. blocked him. Yeah. Shows some strength there. Ooh. Hey, Billy <laughs> Travis stayed with him. Look at that. There Woo! goes Benetti. There goes Michaels. And the two guys who are known for their air acrobatics find themselves flying through the air, put there by Billy Travis. So they were being controlled rather than controlling. Michael's not happy about it. No, I think what they think is that they got a they got a patent and a copyright on all those kind of moves. Let me tell you, they're wrong. There are a lot of guys in there that got good moves. Sean Michaels making the tag on his partner, Marty Gennetti. John Paul sent him to the ropes. They double up on him with a boot as he comes off of there. Back him down. Leave him laying on the mat. There's a cover by Gennetti. The referee's over talking to Billy Travis. He's got a count of two and three. This ball is history. Two minutes, 57 seconds. And the win goes to Sean Michaels and Marty Gennetti. Okay, Michaels and Janetti come through in this fall. We're going to have to check our time and see how much time we left for any further action in this expiration of time match. But no question about it, Janetti and Michaels come up with that one. They didn't do it easy, and we haven't seen the last of that action in a moment. We're going to take time out. We'll be back in just one moment. <laughs> the new team of the Bruise Brothers, Ron and Don, the Blue Jean Bruise Brothers. Uh, they are sponsored, as I think we indicated earlier in the program, by the great singing group Sawyer Brown. Mm -hmm. uh, we got some comments from uh, Mark Miller and Hobie, I think, about it. So let's take a listen and see what this interview is. Well, don't say take it easy, baby, when I'm through. excited because we're here to tell you about a couple new wrestlers that we're going to be, um, I guess, introducing to the Mid-South uh, area. Uh, they actually had their first wrestling match in Memphis uh, last week, and uh, they wrestled a couple guys that uh, uh, hit, him, hit Donnie with uh, brass knuckles. Yeah, they, they were real excited. They wrestled a lot in Florida, and but this was their first Mid-South appearance. They were excited about coming and wrestling, and then this incident happened with brass knuckles with the rock and roll RPMs, and yeah, that, that was a little disappointing because we know wrestling fans want to see wrestling, not not street brawling. So it was kind of a surprise, but uh, these guys, are, they're back in Florida training. They'll come back this week and, and be ready to wrestle here again. And, and they're here to stay. I mean, they're coming to the Mid-South 
now. This is uh, where you'll see them. They're, uh, they're an exciting couple of guys. They're identical twins. They're six foot seven. They're great athletes. And uh, they're going to win some. They're going to lose some. But we're going to be right there with them all the way. And we want the fans to be out there supporting these guys because they're true wrestlers. And, uh, and they, they come to wrestle. And uh, they're athletes. And I think it, it's exciting to watch professional athletes in action. And, uh, and, and I still, I, I don't understand yeah, this brutality. We don't brutality know what happened the, the other night in Memphis, but these guys are here to wrestle, and we know that's what you guys are here to watch. And we are going to be ringside from time to time throughout uh, uh, their career. I mean, we're going to be uh, behind these guys all the way, so we want to invite all the wrestling fans to come out in the Mid-South area and, uh, and watch the, the Blue Denim Bruise Brothers, and Sawyer Brown's going to be right there in their corner all we'll the way. We'll see you ringside. Okay, there you hear it, uh, Mark and Hobie, and here they come right now. I, what am I looking around? You can see these guys anywhere, Ron and Don. Now, you got to you gotta help me one more time. Ron? Okay, and this is Don. How you doing, partner? Ron and Don Bruce, and uh, it's very exciting. We were glad to see you guys in there. And uh, I, I just want to make a comment about the, the match you had with the RPMs. Uh, did it kind of surprise you that they don't have much respect for the rules and the way they, uh, the way they bent them and just flagrantly violated the rules? Did that surprise you guys? Yeah, it did. We, we went in there just to have a good straight up match and, and they pulled something out of their types and, and it did surprise me. I wasn't expecting it. Hey, uh, can I tell you, it won't be the last time and I hope every time you're going to be a little more ready for... Yeah for that kind of action because you're going to be seen. Listen, you guys went to school with what, Mark and Hobie? Was that the idea or Mark or who? Yes, we sure did. We went, it's a little town called Apopka, right outside of Orlando, Florida. Uh -huh. we, went, we went to high school with both of them. Uh -huh. What is the story that I heard Mark saying about you guys throwing a whole senior class out the, <laughs> about the way, and the principal, is there any truth to that, Don? No, no truth to <laughs> that. No truth to no. it. Well, uh, how do you feel about it now that you're into professional wrestling and, and off on your career? Are you looking forward to it? Is it any different than you, what you thought or what? Yeah, we're very much excited about it. We're having a good time. There's a lot of, you know, you see a lot of these guys out here talking about what they're going to do, uh, how bad they are, et cetera, et cetera. Well, we're, we're new in professional wrestling, and we're just looking to do the best we can every time we go out here. And hopefully the crowd will get behind us. Hey, I, I got to say one thing. You have got one ingredient that over the years that Dave and I have been doing uh, wrestling commentary is invaluable, and that is you're both athletes. Now, boy, let me tell you, that will carry you a long way. That will carry you all the way. It takes determination, a lot of the other things that I'm sure you've heard about. But son of a gun, uh, you got a lot of it going, and we're going to wish you the best of luck, and we'll be looking forward to seeing Sawyer Brown when they can come down in, their, in your corner in there, and good luck to you. Don, you. Ron, the Bruise Brothers, and we'll be looking forward to having them back from time to time as uh, they're a couple of real nice young guys, and boy, big, they're very oh, big. Good size, <laughs> Total weight me. over 500 pounds. They go about 501 for, for the pair of them, Davey. And like you say, the athletic ability should uh, put them in good stead when they step into that ring. Hey, we had a lot of action uh, going on here today on Championship Wrestling. We had Manny Fernandez, the Raging Bull, in here. It was all Manny as he was going against uh, Mr. Class. Ricky Fontana said Mr. Class on uh, the back of his wrestling tights. Yep. Uh, Manny Fernandez got the victory in that one. Then it was uh, Jeff Jarrett and the Nasty Boys, Brian Nobbs and Jerry Sag, as they teamed up in a six-man tag team match against the team of the Executioners uh, with Nate the Rat, Nathaniel Whitlock in their corner, and Keith Robertson. Keith Robertson has allied himself on several occasions with uh, folks like the Executioners. They made for a rugged tag team, but the team of Jeff Jarrett and the Nasty Boys did, in fact, come out with a victory. A little over three and a half minutes at the time. And it was Jeff that got the pin with a fine, fine drop kick that he put on Keith Robertson uh, to wrap it up. Yeah, you might say they came out of the pile, too, because there uh, were a pile of guys in, in the in ring when he was able to execute that drop kick and pound them on down. We got a total, of, in case you missed it, we opened up talking about the dollar-a-pound battle royal that's coming up. And uh, we got the total on it. The guys, total guys, to repeat it, uh, weighed in at 4,126 pounds. So okay. that means 4,126 bucks that the wrestlers had to put up. And then the promotion matches the amount that the guys had to put up, and it comes to a total of 8,250 bucks. So, friend, that is a lot of money 
for mm -hmm. some one person to win in that uh, dollar a pound battle royal. David, we have done it again. We're okay. out of time. Out of right. time. What can I say? Thank goodness we'll have some more next week. And yes, hope sir. you'll take advantage of joining us for it. Dave Brown, Lance Russell saying bye-bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling.